Imagination is more important than knowledge. Ooh. Albert Einstein said that. Sound a little cryptic? Did to me the first time I heard it. So let's take a look at why imagination is more important. And specifically, let's look at this idea of creative imagination. Everyone has an imagination. We tend to use it more as kids than we do as adults, but everybody has an imagination. As long as you have the capacity to think of a goal, set it, and then work toward it, if you can think about going out to see a movie, you can think about doing something, whether it's two minutes in the future or six days in the future, whatever, you have an imagination. And kids are great at imagination. You know, you, you give any child a cardboard box and, you know, she can be a pirate sailing the seas. You know, you give, give your son a box. He could be an astronaut exploring new galaxies. You know, put kids together, two, three, four kids together. They could take that box and it's a, now, now it's a house. It's the living room and then it's the bedroom and then it's the kitchen. You know, put them together, it could be the lemonade stand, it could be the hardware store, it could be absolutely anything. Because they frequently, freely, unabashedly use their imaginations. They think of things to do all the time. Yay! I love kids. Now, what I want to talk about is specifically unleashing your creative imagination. And where I want to start is with a question. Do you believe that you can change your life? So wherever you are today, whether you are living in poverty, whether you are starting university, whether you are 50 years of age and looking at retirement, you're 70 years of age, you're already retired. Okay, wherever you are in your life, do you believe that you can change your life? And I have a reason for asking. Uh, this series builds on the video I did originally around getting value from self-help. And the first episode, number 108, was all about self-image. And the episodes, uh, so it starts with 108 and then 110, 112, 114, all the way up to 150. So the even-numbered episodes are going to be this content where it's about getting value from self-help. And yes, I will absolutely build a playlist, I'll call it Getting Value from Self-Help, so you, you will be able to consume this at any point in time. And I confess it's, it is a little bit selfish on my part, uh, many of you may already know, I work a lot with Stephanie Hoden, and we teach uh, uh, lots of stuff about the success principles. We have a six-session program that we do, uh, and we have a larger study that we do. And one of the things that we find is people sometimes come to us and they want to start learning, but they have yet to do any of the basic groundwork. And so that's what this series is for, is to help you do the basic groundwork so that you are ready to take advantage of things that come to you that are in the nature of being self-help. Whether that's a book from John Maxwell, or Jack Canfield, or Dr. Maxwell Maltz, whatever it is. Somebody, you know, if you go to a conference, if you go to some sort of meeting, you have done some of the basic groundwork, sort of like getting a field ready to take seed in the springtime. Okay, you have done the basic groundwork so that you are ready to receive self-help knowledge or information and then put it to use in your life. So that's what this series is for. Whatever your life is today, do you believe you have the ability to imagine 
and then live into something different and better? That's the question I'm after when I say, do you believe you can change your life? Do you believe that you have the ability to imagine something better and live into that something better? Because pretty much everyone has the ability to imagine the exact opposite. You know, we can all imagine things going wrong, things somehow happening that are negative. But a lot of us genuinely refuse to believe that we have the capacity to make our life better. We have this idea that life just happens to us and we sort of have to take whatever comes along. That's completely untrue. But this is the Cranium X Rectum YouTube channel. So, Cranium X Rectum moment. If that's where you are, if you believe that life just happens to you and you have to take whatever comes along, then allow me to invite you to click the red X up there, up here somewhere, I think, in the top right corner. Okay, just close this video because I have nothing for you. If you want to get something from self-help, then you have to believe in the whole concept of being able to help yourself. Now, on the other hand, if the best you can do is to say, I don't know. I think so, but I'm unsure. That's completely okay. That is a perfectly fine place to start. And yes, I do have a script, so if you see me looking down, it's because I'm trying... I am trying to stay within 30 minutes for these videos. Uh, mostly because I have a lot of other things to do every day. <laughs> okay? So if I can stay under 30 minutes, that's really helpful to me. The other thing is, there is no way for me to teach you everything that I have accumulated in my brain over the last 56 years. Because that's how old I am at the time of recording. So I'm trying to stick to 30 minutes. I want to get down to 20 minutes. And what I want to do is communicate to you some basic ideas in each episode so that you can use each episode in the same way that you would use a brick in building a wall. So that you can build a self-image, you can build your success, you can build the life that you desire. Okay? So that's, that's what I'm after. Uh, and what I was saying about, well, I'm not sure, I don't know. Okay, there's, there is no need for you to know at this point. There's just the need for a basic belief that, yeah, I have agency in my life. The choices that I make influence my outcomes. I can change my life. I can change, I can choose to do different things. And when I choose to do different things, I will get different results. And I just need to look at that piece of paper I just set aside. Oh, yes. If you're still watching, because I'll bet some folks have switched off by now. If you're still watching, let's dive in. And what I want to do is start with an article uh, by Jake Yu. He published this article on his blog, and it's an excellent starting point. And what I want to do is I've printed it. I've made some notes on it, and I want to walk through the notes. What I suggest is there is a link in the description that will take you to the web page where Jake has written this article, and I think it's an excellent place to start. Okay, so let's walk through the notes that I've made. Jake's article is titled, Imagination versus Creativity, and he gives 10 examples on how to use both. Now, this is an example I said before. You don't have to have it all down pat when you start. You just need to start. Jake has clearly started. And now, am I going to disagree with some of the things that Jake says? Yes, I am. Am I going to suggest improvements? Yes, I am. And I want to say right at the beginning, when I found this post on Jake's blog, I reached out to Jake 
I, while I'm recording, I'm still waiting to hear back from him. I fully expect that I will. And I also let Jake know that he can have access to this video before I make it public so that he can watch it and see what I have to say. And if he has any kind of response, I'm happy to include it as a pinned comment under the video. Because there is no intention whatsoever to attack anything about what Jake has written. I'm going to disagree with some stuff, and I'm going to suggest improvements, but that's exactly the spirit that I'm using, is I think this is a great place to start. You know, if this is where you are at, if you're in the same kind of place as Jake, hey, that's a good thing. So, hopefully you are looking at this on your computer screen, or you have printed a copy. The first thing is Jake starts with some quick definitions, and he defines imagination, and he defines creativity, and he separates them. Right away, I disagree. As I said at the beginning, what I want to address is the whole concept of creative imagination. They go together. They work together. So the idea of splitting them apart, it weakens your ability to use them as a set of tools together. And there's a part here where Jake says that cre creativity and imagination are like two sides of the same coin. Okay, I get it. The idea is that they go hand in glove. He even says in the very next sentence, imagination feeds creativity and creativity fosters and reinforces imagination. Okay, definitely on the right track. Definitely on the right track. An analogy that might be a little more helpful is if you think about creativity as being a carburetor on a car or a fuel injection system on a car and imagination is the gasoline so you have gasoline you imagine something you set a goal and then to make it happen you feed it into creativity and creativity turns it into in the case of an automobile engine it turns it into horsepower. The car goes zoom down the road. Okay? Fundamentally, as soon as you imagine something, I'm imagining going to the movies. I'm imagining having a ham sandwich. I'm imagining building a, a seven-figure-a-year business. As soon as you begin imagining, you begin creating. They go hand in glove. You may have heard the phrase, anything that the mind of man can conceive, imagine, and believe, it can achieve. This is the foundation of creative imagination. You have to see yourself as having achieved a thing. You have to be able to imagine that. And then you take action to achieve it. So Jake is definitely on, on the right path. He's on the right course here. Let's look at a couple of the examples he gives. Now these are examples that he gives about creativity. He starts there and then he gives examples of imagination. So the first one is songwriting and music production. And he makes music. He's a, he is an artist. He puts this stuff together. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, okay, but to write a song, you have to imagine the music. You know, you need to connect the notes together in your mind, you need to play with them, you need to work at them. Or, uh, because the next one he lists is art and painting, so he's a visual artist as well. Well, if you are making a work of art, a picture, you sketch it. And you, whatever, whether it's a building or it's a flower or whatever it is that you're doing, you will sketch it, get it sort of lined in there, and then you begin to fill it in with colors and paints and, you know, whatever medium you are choosing to use for your artwork. 
And so my question to you as a viewer is, do you see how creativity and imagination flow together? They work together, especially to create a work of art, a picture of some kind. So you are imagining what it is that you want on the paper or on the canvas. And then you begin sketching it in. You might make little changes here and there. You, know, you kind of tweak it until it's, okay, now I know what I want. When you have the imagination part worked out, then you use the paints or whatever medium you're using to create that work of art. So creativity and imagination, they flow together. They work together. Uh, writing I'll skip because clearly I'm an author. I've written multiple books. Uh, it would be far too easy for me to fall into expressing my views and opinions about writing. So I don't want to get into that one. Uh, also partly, greatly because I want to, you know, keep this short. And if I started talking about writing, this could be a two-hour video. Uh, the next example he uses is a new product or service. And that clearly, to develop a new product, well, you have to m imagine it before you can start making it. And the same as a work of art. One that pops to mind readily, and you can find them on YouTube, Edison Trucking. And the fellows that are there at Edison Trucking, it's a company in British Columbia, they are making an electric semi-truck. And as they build the semi-truck, they have to imagine, where do I want the wires to go? Where do I want the batteries to be placed? How do I want the electrical power to be used to drive the truck? So one thing they did to create the electric truck is they have installed E-axles. So the power from the battery goes to the axle, drives the motor in the axle, versus a conventional truck has an engine in the front. When it runs, it powers a drive shaft that goes back and that turns the axles. So a completely different approach. They imagined it. And as they imagined it, they created it. And yes, I recognize I'm covering off Jake's article quickly. Absolutely, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. I will do one of two things. I will either answer the question in the comments, or far more likely, I will use the questions that are asked to make additional videos that answer those questions. Uh, the last one I want to address under creativity is he uses the example of raising children. And I agree with Jake completely. Raising children is a very creative thing because you're helping your children build their self-image. And hopefully it's a strong, positive self-image. You are helping them recognize their imagination and its ability and to harness their imagination as a way of developing themselves and achieving the goals that they want to achieve. Now let me cover off uh, the examples he uses around imagination. And what I want to say right off the top is all of this gears back to the whole idea of the law of attraction. So a creative imagination. Whatever the mind of man can conceive, imagine, and believe, that's an important point, it can achieve. So I could conceive of playing defensive back or offensive tackle on the Dallas Cowboys or some other NFL team. I could certainly conceive of that. I could even imagine myself doing it. But I'm 56 years of age. There's no way I believe that I'm going to play professional football anywhere. 
I would get crushed by these guys that are in their 20s and outweigh me by significant amounts and are doing all the physical training to be out there playing professional football. Okay, so it's important. You can conceive of a thing, you can imagine the thing, you have to be able to believe it. Now, if you, let's say the thing that you conceive is building a seven figure business. Well, right now, today, that, you know, you might be saying, I, yeah, I'm really unsure. You know, that, that almost seems like a lie to me. Okay, that's an okay place to start. Because the next thing is, you are going to write out what it is that you want to achieve. What is the seven-figure business? Is it doing pottery? Is it cleaning out grease traps? Is it, you know, sucking out uh, uh, those toilet systems in the backyard, septic systems, that's it. Is it building houses? Is it being a lawyer? Is it being a doctor? Because, for example, when you are, say, 18 and you're leaving high school, and you think, oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a brain surgeon. I want to be a neurosurgeon. Wow. At 18 years of age, you look at that and you say, okay, I want to get there. But you're also going to say, I have no idea how I'm going to get there. I have no idea how I'm going to pay for university. Am I going to be able to pass all the courses? You know, there's so much between where I am right now and where I want to be, I honestly have no idea whether I can go from here to there. Okay. That's okay. I want to build a seven-figure-a-year business. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. That's okay. The point is, do you believe that you have the capacity to do it? You might need to learn new skills. You might need to build a team around yourself. You recognize there are things you're going to have to do to achieve the goal you want. And so the first thing you do is conceive of the goal. And over time, you fill in more detail. You work out, what is it that I'm going to do? You try some things, they don't quite work, so you make corrections and move in a slightly different direction or maybe you make a really big correction and basically take a left turn or a right turn okay all of that is okay all of that is the process of getting value from self-help because the biggest thing you could do to help yourself is take action is to do a thing give it a shot and then based on what happens you decide this piece worked, this piece didn't work, this piece sort of worked. What am I going to keep? What am I going to toss away? And how do I move forward? Okay, so this whole thing is around the law of attraction. As soon as you imagine something, you begin creating it. And so the first thing that Jake mentions under imagination is having a growth or a dreamer mindset. And what I want to do is draw attention to that idea of a dreamer mindset. Be careful. You know, Jake, be careful. Everybody, be careful. Having a dream, a goal that you want to achieve, is a good thing. But you want to be careful about the thoughts you have. So, thoughts around, I can't, or this will never happen, those are dreams too, and you will make those occur. I can't results in you won't. And if you are just dreaming, just, oh, you know, it, it would be so nice to make, you know, $2 million a year. It would be so nice to be interviewed on CNN. It would be so nice to write a, if you're just dreaming, then you are doing nothing to actually build a plan. Whereas if you have a growth mindset, then you are focused on how do I do things to grow? I need to read this book by John Maxwell. I need to go to this program being offered by Jack Canfield. I need to 
you sit down and write, you know, 20 minutes a day every day to get a book written. When you are thinking about, here I am, and here's where I want to go, having a dream, wanting to get there, is a good thing. Being a dreamer about it starts to get into, maybe that's a bad choice. Because you want to consistently be grounding yourself in, I am actually doing something to make this happen. I'm taking action on this thing. I am not just, oh, that would be really nice to have. I'm, I'm dreaming about having a big house or you know, having a really happy family. and I'm dreaming about having healthy relationships with my kids versus I really want healthy relationships with my kids. And one of the things that I need to do is have open, honest conversations with them. One of the things that I need to do is treat them with respect and help them sort out here, here is something that they want to do what are the parts of it that are dangerous and they need some adult supervision they need some adult help versus some other things they can just kind of go and tackle on their own and if they get you know bumped and bruised or, or whatever that's okay and the next thing he has as, a, as a, an imagination example is meditation and introspec introspection. Here's the thing. We all meditate naturally. We all mull things over in our minds naturally. It's something we do all the time. We all have conversations with ourselves every day. We run into trouble when that conversation center, centers around things such as, well, I can't, or I would never, or bad things always happen to me. You are still meditating. You are imagining things. It's just you happen to be imagining negative things. One of the things that Jake talks about is that snowboarding is a form of meditation. This is an example he uses. Yeah. Okay, that's actually a pretty common misconception. The idea that, because I do it regularly, I will go out for a walk and I will just let my mind go and I'll go for a walk. People do different things and they're doing this thing with which they are very comfortable, they have a good skill level and they can do it without having to focus on it, without having to concentrate on it. Uh, sometimes that's driving a car, which is a bad time to just sort of let your mind wander, but it happens. Uh, and so you're doing this thing, whether it's snowboarding or pottery, you know, whatever it is, and you allow your mind to water, wander. That's really not meditating. Meditating really is focusing on something and holding that thing in your mind. Now the thing on which you focus might be the sound of your breathing. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, and breathing out. So, you know, there's no thinking about, oh, this is what I have to do to build my business. You're just focused on the sound of your breathing. The whole point of meditation is to practice focusing. So you might meditate on, here's what I want my business to look like. And so the practice there is, and over weeks and months and years, you build in more and more and more detail. And the practice is holding your focus on, here's what I need to do in the next several weeks. Here's what I need to do in the next several months. Here are the things that I need to ask someone when I am interviewing them to be an employee. And you work your way through the whole process of building the business. That's meditating on building your business. So when you meditate, it doesn't have to be, here's how I milk a cow. And this is, you know, so I need to work at how I manipulate my fingers to milk a cow. 
it can be that kind of thought where you're actually meditating on how to do something but meditating can be holding your mind still practicing holding your mind still and from my own experience a very good thing that I find useful when I'm trying to do that is rather than trying to think about nothing because that's incredibly difficult I don't know if it's difficult for everyone but it's certainly difficult for me so what I do rather than trying to just think about nothing is I focus on the sound of my breath coming in and my breath going out my breath coming in and my breath going out I focus on the feel I generate a mental image of the air coming in my nose traveling down my the back of my throat I can feel it cooling the back of my throat the air goes down and I visualize it going down into my stomach not my lungs down into my stomach and cycling and then coming back up and out my mouth and I visualize that and that's what I focus on the sound of my breathing and the, the vision of the energy coming in filling me and bad stuff leaving okay uh, I've kind of gotten off the script here <laughs> imagine that I got off script yes I made a note here meditation is worth a more concerted effort than doing it while doing something else if you're doing something else you aren't really meditating you're letting your mind wander and that can certainly be a part of the creative process absolutely and it can be a very good thing to do what I'm doing is trying to get you to realize and pay attention to part of create imagination part of getting what it is that you want is and I just talked about this in the previous episode it's about literacy so you need to be aware of what it is that you are doing and you need to be deliberate in what it is that you are doing just willy-nilly being illiterate about it being weak in describing what it is that you want to do is going to result in you never achieving what you want to do you know, a key here for creative imagination is that you need to vividly repeatedly imagine the thing that you want and the only way to be vivid about it is to be incredibly detailed and it starts with not so much detail just kind of an idea fill in some more fill in some more fill in some more get lots more detail get lots more detail fill in some more until you get to the point which depending on what it is might take you three four days might take you three four years to get all the detail you want and as you fill in all that detail that activates the law of attraction it activates your creative imagination it activates the vibration okay and you draw this stuff into your life and as you're taking action to make it happen you will draw into your life the people and resources you need to continue taking action and to continue building your success that's all I want to cover with with Jake's blog post and I hope you see how Jake has a lot of good material here is a really great starting point and whatever it is he wants to achieve as a singer-songwriter what he wants to achieve as an artist as an author I'm sure that he is well on his way to getting value from self-help to move from where he is to where he wants to be and I I would say read what he has written here a couple of times take from it what moves you forward and serves you also take from it the suggestions that I have made for how to strengthen what it is that Jake has here as a starting point I have a couple other things I want to cover before I finish this off now Jake and what Jake has written he is an excellent example of someone getting value from self-help. He's an excellent example of someone who is building a plan 
to move himself from where, where he is to where he wants to be. And remember that I said at the beginning that there's no requirement for you to be, you know, Norman Vincent Peale or John Maxwell or Jack Canfield or anybody else. We all start at zero. Okay, we all start at zero because we're born and we know nothing. We have no ability to communicate. You know, a baby basically eats, sleeps, and poops. That's it. And then around 12 months, babies start to vocalize. They're learning words. And we move forward, and ideally, as Jake pointed out, he admires parents who help children to build strong, positive self-images and to build imagination into their lives and to look at goals and achieve goals. So we make progress as we're moving through our life, both as a child and then moving into being a young adult, somewhere around 12, 13 years of age, moving up through our teens and our 20s, that's the young adult period, and then basically sometime around our mid to late 20s moving onward, we are a full-fledged adult. Hopefully. We make progress at different rates. Now, I can look at my life and I can think back and see how I made progress, built successes, and then lost successes. How I got married and lost those marriages, because I've been divorced twice. What I want to wrap up with is looking at creative imagination. So whether you are with me, you're in your 50s or 60s or 70s, and you're saying, okay, I've done all of this stuff, now I want to do something different, or you are in your teens and your 20s, wherever it is that you are, I want to look at what is creative imagination and why is it more important than knowledge. And the example I want to use is a film, it's called Men in Black, it came out in 1997. It stars Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. And there's a point in the movie where Tommy Lee Jones' character says to Will Smith's character, humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They think they have a good beat on things. And that's true. Remember, this is the Cranium X Rectum show. Okay, this is the Cranium X Rectum YouTube channel. So, next part. Tommy Lee Jones' character goes on to say, 1,500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat. And 15 minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what we'll know tomorrow. And today we have artificial intelligence. People think it's going to do all kinds of wonderful things. There are people who believe it's going to destroy humanity. This is why imagination is more important than knowledge. People around you know. They know what you can't do and what you can't achieve. It's up to you to imagine what you can do. And creative imagination, as soon as you start imagining what you can do, your mind starts drawing to you the things you need to get it done. And it's up to us, we imagine what it is that we want to do, the goal that we want to achieve, and then we create that reality by building the knowledge and the experience needed to make those things happen. That's an important point. You need to see yourself having achieved the thing that you want to do. And there are two ways to see yourself doing it. One is an imagined rehearsal, 
and the other is an imagined movie. And the difference between the two is an imagined rehearsal is first person. So if it's swinging a golf club, you actually feel yourself swinging the golf club. You see the golf club go by and the ball goes sailing off. If it's a movie, that's in third person. You're watching yourself swing the golf club and the ball go sailing out onto the fairway. Now, this is stuff is used all the time. Sports people use this stuff all the time. You will hear coaches talking about see yourself sinking the shot. Always see yourself sinking the shot. See yourself making the play. See yourself doing the thing. Envision it. Because what you see yourself doing, you will then do. Okay, that's the rehearsal. The movie, salespeople use mental movies a lot. They see themselves having a conversation with somebody, and they see that person responding in a particular way, and they see themselves taking the conversation to the conclusion of making the sale. They practice watching themselves, they've just said whatever it is they have to say, and they watch themselves sit there saying nothing, waiting for the other person to speak. Because it's a basic tenet of sales that when you're making a pitch and you reach the decision point, the next person who speaks is the loser. So in the case of making a sale, if you are the next person who speaks, you will lose the sale. If the customer is the next person who speaks, you will make the sale. That's a little oversimplified, but that's the basic approach. And here's the thing. This is really, really important. Because remember, I've already talked about, you don't quite know, you don't really have very much detail. You start filling in details, you start filling in information. As you fill in detail, it's more than just tab A goes in slot B to make box C. What you want to do is involve as many of your five senses as possible. You want to see the things happening. That's where you have both the rehearsal and the movie. Okay? You want to feel the things happening. So when you're rehearsing, you want to feel the swing of the golf club. You want to hear the conversation. You want to smell whatever it is that's in the room, whether that's your cologne, the other person's cologne, uh, cookies baking, whatever it is that's appropriate, and you want to feel. So you want to see, you want to smell, you want to taste wherever possible, you want to hear, and you want to feel. Is that all five? I think that's all five. As much as possible, you want to involve those five senses, both when you are doing a rehearsal, so that's first person, so you see yourself writing a thing, you see yourself swinging a bat, you, you, know, you are doing the thing. You are flying the airplane, driving the car, whatever it is. The mental movie, the imagined movie, is you are watching yourself drive the car, swing the bat, climb the mountain. Again, whatever it is. The difference between the two is first person versus third person. Doing it directly versus watching yourself do it. In both instances, you want to do it perfectly. You want to see yourself doing whatever it is perfectly. Let me remind you. You whatever your self-image vividly, repeatedly imagines, it accepts as true. Whatever you vividly and repeatedly imagine, you accept as true. It becomes part of your reality. And then the whole law of attraction thing is you operating on a vibrational level that is equal to the thing you want to achieve. 
and you are drawing in the people and resources you need to make it happen. And this comes with repeated practice. Anything you have done, riding a bicycle. The first time people get on a bicycle and they try to pedal, they generally fall over. And then you get better and you get better and you get better. You know, one of the reasons why you, know, you fall over is why they make training wheels for bicycles. So that you can use a bicycle on your own without falling over all the time. You have training wheels to help you stay upright. Then as you get better, you take the training wheels off. Well, the first time you try to imagine going from where you are to where you want to be, there are going to be all kinds of gaps. There's going to be all kinds of detail missing. And that's okay. You will feel, fill in that detail. You will use more of your senses the more you practice doing it. I made a note here. If there is one little piece you are having difficulty seeing, it is perfectly okay to invest some time to work on imagining that one piece. You're basically, you're sorting out some details so that you can fill them in and you can make the whole movie run more smoothly in your mind. And again, understand this is a skill. It may not feel like a skill. It may feel like you're daydreaming. But daydreaming is unfocused and without purpose. Doing a, an imagined rehearsal, doing an imagined movie, these things are with purpose. You have something toward which you are moving, toward which you are striving, something that you want to achieve. That's the point of doing this. I could go on for hours, I could go on for days actually, but let me leave it there. There are more episodes to come, I, I will fill in more detail as I go, and of course, when you have questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, and. I sometimes forget to ask this, if you are finding this useful, if you could click on the thumbs up, if you could give this video a like, that's a huge big help to me, I would really appreciate it, because it tells YouTube that I'm making content people like, and it encourages YouTube to then share that content with other people. Okie doke, thank you very much, have yourself a great day, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.